The oldest surviving copy of the Quran that we have found to date, found in the dome of the Great Mosque of Sana'a, Yemen. This finding is astounding. It gives us a glimpse into Islamic history and how the Quran that we have today ended up in that form. Primary source of Quran transmission is the oral recitation, not the manuscripts. So we don't take Quran from unknown sources, but rather we take it from well-known Quran reciters who were experts in memorizing the recitation of Quran. Now ask yourself, all of these differences that we're about to show you, are these all mistakes? Yes, Abdullah Samir. All the variations in the lower text of Sana manuscript are mistakes from the scribe. The scribe of the Sana manuscript himself admitted that he made mistakes. We will see how the scribe of Sana manuscript admitted that he made mistakes. The oldest surviving copy of the Quran that we have found to date, found in the dome of the Great Mosque of Sana'a, Yemen. This is absolutely wrong. There are many other Quran manuscripts which are from the same period of Sana manuscript and probably even older. Almost all the Quran manuscripts are identical word for word with each other. We can say with confidence that at least 97% of Quran manuscripts are identical, unlike the Bible which does not even have two identical manuscripts. The condition of Quran manuscripts is one million times better than that of Bible and any other book in history. No other book in history have huge amount of manuscripts close to the original source as the Quran have. We don't take Quran from unknown sources. Christians don't even know who are the authors of the Bible and they don't care. There are more than 200,000 scribal mistakes in the Bible manuscripts. The problem is, we don't have the originals of the New Testament. What we have are thousands of copies of the New Testament that were made, in most cases, centuries later. These copies that were made centuries later contain numerous mistakes thousands of mistakes, tens of thousands of mistakes, hundreds of thousands of mistakes. Peace be upon you brothers and sisters. Does the Sana manuscript disprove the preservation of Quran as Abdullah Samir claims? The Sana manuscript is one of the earliest manuscripts of Quran. It contains upper and lower texts. The lower text was erased and then the upper text was written over it. However, the lower text contains some differences from the Quranic text. And I will explain why Sana manuscript contains some differences. The oldest surviving copy of the Quran that we have found to date, found in the dome of the Great Mosque of Sana'a, Yemen. So he is saying that Sana manuscript is the oldest Quran manuscript found. However, this is absolutely wrong. There are many other Quran manuscripts which are from the same period of Sana manuscript and probably even older. But at least he was being honest and corrected this wrong information while editing his video. While editing the video, he said that it is one of the oldest not the oldest. However, he destroyed his own argument by admitting that Sana manuscript is one of the oldest. Because his entire argument is based on Sana manuscript being the oldest. And I will prove later that we have tons of other manuscripts from the same period of Sana manuscript which are identical to Quran. To think that the entire history of Islam can hang on these documents which are sometimes kept out of the public eye is shocking. Regardless of how Abdullah Samir is being a Bollywood drama queen who like to make huge mountain from small cup of sand. The claim that Yemeni authorities were hiding Sana manuscript from public is false. The suppression narrative is inaccurate. It is true that Gerdpung did not share his photographs with scholars who asked for them, nor publish a great deal on them himself, but this was his personal choice, not the doing of Yemen. Furthermore, there was nothing to prevent other scholars from going to Yemen to study the folios and write about them. 
This makes it one of the most significant findings today that can help us to piece the puzzle together of how the Quran ended up the way it is now. So he is saying that this manuscript helps us piece the puzzle together of how Quran ended up in its current form. He is speaking as if Quran was some sort of a secret book which was lost or hidden for hundreds of years like the Bible. This guy doesn't know that Quran was memorized by thousands of people from time of Prophet Muhammad and was transmitted orally from Prophet Muhammad himself by multitude of well-known and famous Quran reciters who were leaders in the field of Quran recitation and memorization like Hafs, Asim and Nafi for example who spent most of their lives memorizing Quran and transmitting it to their students. He is speaking as if Quran was a hidden unknown book in a cave which was recently discovered. He is treating Quran as the Bible which was written by unknown authors and have its manuscripts buried and lost for hundreds of years. I believe that this surviving text that was erased that we were able to get a hold of is actually an older copy of the Quran before Uthman was able to standardize it. He is saying that Uthman standardized Quran, hmm? but there is nothing as standardization of Quran. This is a lie made up by ignorant Christian missionaries and Abdullah Samir is blindly copying them. What Uthman did is that he copied the original manuscripts which were already there and he required at least two witnesses from those who memorized Quran for every Quran verse before copying it and keep in mind that Uthman was the close companion of Prophet Muhammad. The Sana'a manuscripts are considered non-Uthmanic. That means they differ from the Uthmani Quran that we have today. It is only the lower text of Sana manuscript which is considered as non-Uthmanic, while the upper text is identical to the Quran. The scholars Sadeghi and Godazi said the upper text is from the standard textual tradition, which means that upper text of Sana manuscript is identical to the Quran. And we will see why the lower text contains minor differences. That means they differ from the Uthmani Quran that we have today. In terms of the surah order, there's actual words and phrases which are different. There are differences in the lower text of Sana manuscript for sure. But most of these differences are so minor and don't affect the meaning at all when compared to the original text. And here is Gerd Pung who studied the manuscript in an anti-Islam Christian missionary channel. He is admitting that the differences are few and not effective at all. طيب الذي اكتشفنا في في الخط الاول من القران اللي يعني تحتاني انه تبديل مش كثير 
يعني فيها لكن موجود موجود يعني ما في شك يعني مش هو لكن الواضح انه لا يزال القران يعني هو قران في مجمله في مجمله Now let's see examples of those differences and how they are not effective and don't change the meaning at all. This is the Sana lower text and this is the Quran text. Both of these words are different, but both of them have the same exact meaning, which is he sent. We know that this word is the correct one because we got it from Prophet Muhammad, his companions and their students from authentic chain of narrators. While we don't know who wrote this word, this word means then they dismissed. While this means so they dismissed. We know that this word is the correct one because we got it from Prophet Muhammad, his companions, and their students from authentic chain of narrators. While we have no idea who wrote this, this one means a messenger from among yourselves. While this one means messenger from among you. Both of these words are different but both have the same meaning which is what they do. Both of these words are different but both have the same meaning which is you have came with. This word means does anyone see you? While this one means does anyone see us? We know that this word is the correct one because we got it from Prophet Muhammad, his companions and their students from authentic chain of narrators. While we have no idea who wrote this, and if abdullah samir have a bit of knowledge he would know that we muslims don't accept any information regarding our religion from unknown people unlike christians who blindly accept the bible and its manuscripts without even knowing who wrote it our religion is based on a method called isnad which means chain of transmission he is claiming that he was preaching islam for 15 years yet he doesn't know this simple fact Now ask yourself all of these differences that we're about to show you are these all mistakes Yes Abdullah Samir all the variations in the lower text of Sana manuscript are mistakes from the scribe The scribe of the Sana manuscript himself admitted that he made mistakes We will see how the scribe of Sana manuscript admitted that he made mistakes I believe that this surviving text that was erased that we were able to get a hold of is actually an older copy of the Quran before Uthman was able to standardize it so abdullah samir's main argument is that sana manuscript is the oldest one and that the differences in the lower text of sana manuscript are not mistakes from the scribe but rather it was an earlier so called version of quran as he claims Now watch the entire argument of Abdullah Samir being crushed and destroyed with solid evidences. There are three main points which I will use to refute his argument. What is the primary source of Quran transmission? Is the Sana manuscript a reliable source to use against Quran? Is Sana manuscript the oldest manuscript of Quran? And finally, I will make the conclusion. The second and third points will totally destroy Abdullah Samir's argument. What is the primary source of Quran transmission? Many think that Quran is just a written text like the Bible and all other books. But that is not the case at all. Quran doesn't depend on pen and paper. First of all, Quran itself means recitation. The way of reciting Quran is known as tatil. For example listen to the voice of this Quran reciter Wa idha laqu alladhina amanu qalu amanna wa idha khala ba'dhum ila ba'dhin qalu qalu atuhaddithunahum bima fataha Allah 'alaykum liyuhaddukum ليحاجوكم به عند ربكم افلا تعقلون Quran was fully transmitted from time of Prophet Muhammad till now by this way of oral recitation and this way is much better than writing or copying because errors and mistakes may result from writing or copying
and these copying errors are known as scribal errors. So oral recitation from memory is much better than copying. For example, if you perfectly memorized a poem called Dirge by William Shakespeare. And then I gave you two options. Option 1, to copy this poem or write it on paper. Option 2, to orally recite the poem which you perfectly memorized. The probability of you doing mistakes while orally reciting the poem is much lower than the probability of mistakes you will do while copying or writing it because the movements of your eyes and hand will not always be perfect and this causes scribal errors in an article by university of alberta they provided list of scribal errors and their reasons that is why uthman required at least two witnesses for every quran verse before copying it also you can make typing errors while writing a facebook or youtube comment that is why we always double check and edit our comments before posting them. So the primary source of Quran transmission is the oral recitation not the manuscripts. And this oral recitation is memorized by millions of Muslims even children who can recite Quran entirely in front of you without even looking at a written text. <laughs> فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاكِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ آلِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ If those Quran reciters wrote or copied the Quranic text without reciting it, they will surely make mistakes. But if they recite Quran orally from their perfect memorization, they will probably never do a single mistake. And Allah said that he made Quran easy for remembrance. Memorizing Quran is easy. This is an observable proven fact. Quran is the only book in world which is being memorized from cover to cover by millions. Also for example, if a poet wrote a certain poetry which was then fully memorized by thousands of people. And then we discovered an old paper written by an unknown person. And this paper contains some differences from the poetry which was orally memorized by thousands. Should we then change the original poetry just because we found an old paper written by a known person who obviously made mistakes? This will not make any sense. Same cases with Quran. We will not change it just because of a manuscript written by a known scribe. Unlike Christians, who are constantly changing the so-called Holy Bible because of anonymous manuscripts. So the primary source of Quran preservation is from authentic oral transmissions which are supported by unbreakable chain of narrators and we have complete knowledge about each and every one who is in the chain of narrators. For example, this is chain of narrators of Hafs recitation. So we don't take Quran from unknown sources. But rather we take it from well-known Quran reciters who were experts in memorizing the recitation of Quran. And our religion is based on a method called Isnad. An authentic Isnad means chain of transmission which could be traced back to its original source. We don't accept any information without a reliable Isnad. And in order for an Isnad to be fully reliable, the narrators should be trustworthy and well known and the chain should be connected which means narrators met or learned from each other. So the standards applied in Islam is different from Christianity and all other religions. Christians don't even know who are the authors of the Bible and they don't care. Book in the New Testament that addresses the subject. Yeah. Do we know who wrote the book of Hebrews? No, we do not. Unlike all other religions, Islam is the only religion which requires authenticity of the source of information before accepting it. If for example, the Sana manuscript was presented to a great Muslim scholar like Al-Bukhari. First thing he will ask is who wrote it? And when did he write it? And who was his teacher? That's why the early Muslim scholar Muhammad bin Sarin said. Indeed this knowledge is faith, so carefully consider from whom you take your faith. All other religions don't apply these standards. Followers of other religions don't even know from whom they got their sources and how. So don't bring me a manuscript which we don't know who wrote it and say that it is different from Quran.
because this criteria is not even applied in Islam. The primary source of Quran transmission is the oral memorized recitation. Ibn Taymiyyah, who was a scholar in the 13th century, said, The transmission of Quran depends on memorization of hearts, i.e. oral memorization, not on copies. He also says, and Quran is still preserved in the chests with a mutawati transmission, i.e. transmission by multitude of reciters. Even if someone intended to change something in the copies of Quran and then presented it to Muslim children, they will know that he changed the copy of Quran due to their memorization of Quran. Ibn al-Jazari, who was a scholar in the 14th century, also says, Transmission of Quran depends on the preservation in hearts and chests, i.e. oral memorization, not on writing the copies. So all Muslim scholars agree that the transmitted well-known oral recitations from the Prophet are the main source for Quran, not the written copies or manuscripts. And Allah said that Quran is preserved in the chests of believers. And He said that Quran can't be washed away with water. Which means that Quran is in the hearts of believers, not in papers or manuscripts which can be washed away. So even if Abdullah Samir and his likes brought hundreds of thousands of manuscripts which doesn't agree with Quran, it means nothing for us Muslims. Because we don't even consider these manuscripts which were written by unknown scribes as a valid source for transmission of Quran. Abdullah Samir should try making this argument with Christians who blindly accept the Bible manuscripts without knowing who wrote them. So if Abdullah Samir wants to have problem with transmission of Quran, he should have problems with the orally transmitted recitations of Quran, not on the current manuscripts. And if he have problem with the Kirat, we already know that the Kirat a part of Quran revelation. Because Prophet Muhammad himself said this. He said, the Quran has been revealed in seven different ways, so recite it in the way that is easier for you. Allah has commanded you to make your community read the Quran in seven modes, in whichever mode they read, that will be correct. And Ibn al-Jazari, who was scholar in the 14th century, said, Every reading which agrees with Arabic and with one of the Uthmanic Codex and it have authentic chain of transmission, then it is a correct reading which must not be rejected and not permissible to deny. And it is part of the seven modes which Quran have been revealed. So we already know by evidence that the Kirat are part of the Quran revelation. We have no problem with that. So in conclusion, we don't depend on any of the current manuscripts which were written by unknown scribes. But we depend on the authentic oral recitations which could be traced back to Prophet Muhammad himself. The Sana manuscript means nothing to us in terms of Quran transmission. And it have been proven that the manuscript tradition causes scribal errors. And the best example of scribal errors is the Bible. The Bible manuscripts are filled with tons of mistakes. Even the most careful scribe could make mistakes. However careful the scribe might be, it was almost impossible in copying a long and difficult manuscript to prevent the occurrence of errors. Yet Christians depended on this flawed method. That's why the Bible is filled with thousands of scribal mistakes. Even in printed Bibles, whose proofs have been carefully examined and re-examined, these mistakes creep in. There are more than 200,000 scribal mistakes in the Bible manuscripts. And there are even intentional changes made by scribes of Bible manuscripts. That's why Christian scholars have to revise the Bible over and over again. And famous Bible manuscript scholars like Kurt Oland and Bruce Metzger are revising the Bible in a book called UBS Greek New Testament, which have five editions till now. And in each edition, they are making changes to the Bible based on manuscripts. For example, they made 500 changes from the first to third edition. And the editors of the UBS gave grades for every New Testament verse. These grades are based on how certain they are that the verse resembles the original text. 8.7% of the New Testament got grade A. 32.3% got B. 48.6% got C. 10.4% got D.
So according to manuscript scholars of the Bible, about 50% of the New Testament is doubtful. That is because Christians have depended on a flawed method while transmitting the biblical text. While we Muslims had the best transmission method in history. So we should expect more and more Bible versions to come soon. Now coming to the second point. Is Sana manuscript a reliable source to criticize Quran with? Abdullah Samir's main argument is that the lower text of Sana manuscript was a perfect copy of Quran. Which means that the scribe was perfectly and carefully copying the Quran according to him. He claims that the scribe of Sana manuscript didn't make mistakes while copying Quran. Now ask yourself, all of these differences that we're about to show you, are these all mistakes? And he claims that the Sana manuscript was an older version of Quran which was later changed. I believe that this surviving text that was erased that we were able to get a hold of is actually an older copy of the Quran before Uthman was able to standardize it. However, Abdullah Samir didn't provide a single shred of evidence for his baseless claims. Now I will prove with solid evidences that the scribe of Sana manuscript did make mistakes while writing the manuscript. And thus Abdullah Samir's argument will be destroyed. We will see how the scribe of Sana manuscript himself admitted that he made mistakes while writing the manuscript. His mistakes can be explained. We can give reasons for his mistakes. In 2012, two scholars named Sadeghi and Godazi published a study regarding the lower text of Sana manuscript. In this study, they published the lower text of Sana manuscript. And they showed how the scribe was confused and made many mistakes which are not part of the Quran. Let's see some examples of these mistakes. In Quran 552, in this space, the scribe forgot to write these words, which means Allah will. And as we can see, without these two words, the sentence is incomplete and doesn't make sense. So here the scribe proved that he have bad memory and was being careless. And in this case, the scribe have initially forgotten a word. And then he added it after noticing that he forgot. The word which he initially forgot is Rahim, which means merciful. And the evidence is that he wrote part of the word Rahim without the first letter of the word, which is R. But he attached part of the word to the R letter of the previous word. Because the previous word also ends with R letter. This means that he initially forgot to write the word but then wrote it later after remembering it. For example, if in my mind, I want to write never return. But I wrote never and forgot to write return. So I didn't write the first letter of return, which is R, and after noticing that I forgot to write return, I then used the last letter of never, which is also R, as the first letter of the word return, which I forgot. So that it will be like, never, return. This clearly proves that the scribe forgot to write it due to his bad memory. And also it is slightly above the line. Now this case clearly proves that the scribe was confused and had bad memory of Quran. The scribe here confused two words which have similar meaning. The two words are al weldan and al tefal al weldan means boys. al tefal means children. The Quranic text says al tefal which means children. But the scribe, due to his confusion and bad memory, he was about to write al weldan instead of al tefal He initially wrote the first three letters of al weldan Then he realized that he is writing the wrong word. He realized that the Quran says children, not boys. It is as if in his mind, he was saying, Oh wait, this is not what the Quran originally says, I am wrong. 
So he wrote the first three letters of Al Veldan. Then he continued to write the correct word without erasing the wrong one. To better explain this scenario, let me give an example in English. Suppose you want to write this sentence: The boys have grown up. But while writing, your mind was confused, and you was about to write children instead of boys. So you wrote the first four letters of children, then stopped, because you realized that this is not the word which you want to write. So instead of erasing the first four letters of the wrong word, which is children, you kept it as it is and continued to write the correct word in your mind, which is boys. This clearly shows the confusion and bad memory of the scribe, and this explains the rest of differences in the lower text as being confusing and conflation of similar words. Now let's see how the scribe made many mistakes in same page. In this case, the scribe made a correction to a word he initially wrote. However, the correction he made is a grammatical error. The scribe initially wrote the word jahada, which means he strove. But later on, the scribe added two letters in Arabic in the small available space. The two letters he added have changed the word jahada to jahadu. The new word jahadu means they strove. This correction is wrong. However, as the plural jahadu does not agree with the singular pronoun man preceding it, which means he added a plural verb to a singular pronoun, which is wrong. Perhaps the scribe conflated this word with the next verse's jahadu which should be in plural. So here the scribe thought that he made a mistake then he made a correction. However, his correction itself is a mistake, a grammatical mistake. So again the scribe proves here that he is confused. In this case, the scribe wrote two words which are in the Allahi which means in the sight of Allah. But then he erased it and wrote the next word, which is wa ola eka in its place, which means and it is those. So here the scribe wrote a phrase which is part of Quran but he thought that it is not part of Quran while it is already part of Quran so once again this proves the bad memory of the scribe regarding Quran in this case the scribe skipped a word and wrote the next word instead of it then he realized that he skipped a word So he erased the current word which is ashiratukum which means your relatives and wrote the word which he skipped which is azwajukum which means your wives in other words the scribe may have caught himself in the course of an inadvertent omission if for example you want to write this sentence but while writing you skipped this word and wrote the next word instead of it Then you realized that you skipped a word so you erased the current word and then wrote the word which you skipped In this case the scribe confused two similar words again the scribe initially wrote walad here which means boy then he realized that he wrote the wrong word so he erased it and wrote gulam instead of it which also means boy This clearly shows how the scribe used to change his mind after realizing that he wrote wrong words which means that the differences in the lower text of sana manuscript are mistakes from the scribe not that it was an older version of quran as abdullah samir claims i believe that this surviving text that was erased that we were able to get a hold of is actually an older copy of the quran before what man was able to standardize it This case clearly shows how the scribe was being careless and confused. He wrote the word minham which means from them in the wrong place. Then he continued writing without erasing it.
The presence of the word minham, i.e., from them, doesn't make sense. Because the sentence would be awkward. It would be like, indeed, my servants, from them, no authority will you have over them. From them, here, is meaningless in Arabic. And here the scribe writes, Do not say in the name of Allah, after writing, in the name of Allah. Because chapter 9 of Quran is the only chapter which does not start with in the name of Allah. So this clearly shows that Sana manuscript was not meant to be a perfect copy of Quran to be transmitted among people. And this is also the opinion of the scholar Asma Hilali. And here are more examples in which the scribe realized that he made mistakes. So the scribe here is clearly admitting that he made mistakes which are not part of Quran. On the other hand, Abdullah Samir wants to convince us that these mistakes are rather an older version of Quran. And that the lower text of Sana manuscript was a perfect copy of Quran. Now ask yourself, all of these differences that we're about to show you, are these all mistakes? I believe that this surviving text that was erased that we were able to get a hold of is actually an older copy of the Quran before Uthman was able to standardize it. So the differences between the lower text of Sana manuscript and Quran can be explained as confusion, mind changing after realizing mistakes, conflation of similar words, or bad memory from the scribe. So the claim of Abdullah Samir that Sana manuscript lower text was somehow a perfect older version of Quran is a baseless ridiculous claim which can be easily disproven from the manuscript itself. And the scribe showed in many instances how careless he was. And we don't take Quran and our religion from unknown careless people. Rather we take Quran from well-known reliable reciters who learn from other reliable reciters. Our religion is based on chain of transmission, not on unknown sources. And the lower text of Sana manuscript was clearly unprofessionally written. So why Abdullah Samir don't pick a professionally written manuscript like Topkai manuscript to make his argument? Even if there are professionally written manuscripts which are 100% identical to Quran. Still we will not consider it as reliable source for Quran transmission. Because we don't accept sources from unknown people as valid in our religion. So criticizing scripture based on its current manuscripts will not work with us Muslims. Because these current manuscripts means nothing to us in terms of Quran transmission. Criticizing manuscripts will work with followers of other religions like Hindus and Christians. Christians consider Bible manuscripts like Codex Vaticanus and Sinaiticus as source of Bible transmission, while they don't even know who wrote them. Meanwhile, Codex Vaticanus and Sinaiticus are so different from current Bible versions. Verses and entire passages are missing from Codex Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. For example, John chapter 753 to John chapter 811, which is story of adulterous woman, is missing from Codex Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, i.e. oldest Bible manuscripts. An entire story is missing between this gap, which is so ironic. Also in Codex Vaticanus, we can find a footnote which says, Fool and knave, can't you leave the old reading alone and not alter it? So here we can see that that Codex Vaticanus, which is the most reliable Bible manuscript, is filled with lies. Now coming to third part. Is Sana manuscript the oldest manuscript of Quran? It can neither be proven or disproven with certainty that it is the oldest manuscript. Because as Abdullah Samir said that this depends on accuracy of carbon dating. However, there are many manuscripts which have great probability to be older than Sana manuscript. The Sana manuscript have been carbon dated to be before 671 AD with a probability of 99%. And here, the scholar Bainim says that this suggests that it is earliest manuscript. 
However, he said this in 2012, before many other Quran manuscripts undergo carbon dating as well. Let's see examples of these manuscripts, which have been carbon dated. The Birmingham Manuscript In 2015, the Birmingham Manuscript have been carbon dated to the period between 568 and 645 AD, with 95.4% accuracy thus making it having a high probability to be older than Sana manuscript. Many think that Birmingham manuscript is only four pages. But in fact, it is more than two folios. The Birmingham manuscript belongs to another codex which is kept in France known as Codex Arab 328C. and the Birmingham manuscript, which belongs to Codex Arab 328c, makes about 8.3% of Quranic text. And it is almost 100% identical to Quran. The parts of the Quran that are contained in those fragments are very similar indeed to the Quran as we have it today. And so this tends to support the view that um, the Quran um, that we now have is more or less very close indeed to the Quran as it uh, was brought together in the early years of Islam. Also there is a probability that the scribe of Birmingham manuscript witnessed Prophet Muhammad in his lifetime. The person who actually wrote it may well have known the Prophet Muhammad. He would have seen him probably, he would maybe have heard him preach. Um, he may have known him personally, and that really is quite a thought to conjure with. The QAF 47 Manuscript This manuscript have been carbon dated to be between 606 and 652 AD with 95.4% accuracy. So it also have high probability to be earlier than Sana manuscript or from same period and it makes about 16% of Quranic text and is also identical to Quran. Also keep in mind that Prophet Muhammad received revelation in 610 AD and died in 632 AD i.e. in the 7th century. So these manuscripts are extremely close to the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad. No other book in history have manuscripts extremely close to the original source like Quran. Not even the Bible. The Tubingen Manuscript This manuscript, which is named as VI-165, have been carbon dated by Tubingen University to be between 649 and 675 AD with 95% accuracy. Which means 20 to 40 years after the death of Prophet Muhammad. So there is a probability for Tubingen manuscript to be from same period of Sana manuscript or earlier. And it makes about 26% of Quranic text. While lower text of Sana manuscript makes about 20%. And it is also identical to Quran. Another manuscript is MS Leiden 14.545b, which have been carbon dated to be between 30 to 70 years after Prophet Muhammad. So there is also a probability that it would be older than Sana manuscript or from same period. And this manuscript belongs to another group of manuscripts known as Arab 331 and Marcel 3. And they make about 28% of Quranic text. Codex Sana Dam 0125.1 Manuscript which have been carbon dated to be between 543 and 643 AD with 95% probability. So there is also high probability that it is older than Sana manuscript which have been carbon dated to be before 671 AD. Codex Sana Dam 0129.1 Manuscript It have been carbon dated to be between 633 and 665 AD. It also have probability to be older than Sana manuscript. And it contains 22% of Quranic text. We also have many other manuscripts from the 7th century which have not been carbon dated yet. 
but their dating is based on science of paleography, which is study of ancient handwriting. We have Codex 917, which have been dated to 692 AD by a scholar named Lemhis. His dating is based on the punctuation method, which is exactly the same as Dome of the Rock punctuation method in 692 AD. He says that this method did not survive and probably was followed for only a short time. This external evidence leads to the conclusion that early Quran manuscripts with the same method of punctuation date roughly from the same short period, i.e., from around 692 CE when the Dome of the Rock was built. And he then lists four manuscripts and one of them is Codex 917. Also Codex 917 contains 27% of Quranic text, which is very good amount for an early manuscript. Codex Parisino Petropolitanus, 7th century, 45% of Quranic text. Codex BL 2165, 7th century, 57% of Quranic text. And we even have early full manuscripts which contains 99% of the Quranic text. Like Codex Wettstein II, 1913 which have been carbon dated to be between 662 and 765 CE with 95.4% probability and 72.8% to be between 662 and 714 CE. So there is also a probability that it would be from same period of Sana manuscript and it contains 85% of Quranic text and it's written in Hijazi script which somehow proves that it was written in the 7th century. Because Hijazi script is the oldest Arabic script and was used widely in the 7th century. Also, we have the top copy manuscript, which makes about 99% of the Quranic text. It have been dated to late 7th century and early 8th century. An average of 70 years after the death of Prophet Muhammad and it is 100% identical to Quran. However, some ignorants who don't know what they are talking about are claiming that top copy manuscript contains more than 2000 differences from Quran. We not we need to talk about the variants. Oh um, yeah. The top copy has an enormous amount of variants, not just a few, not just we 100, 2270 variants. Alta Kulic says, but he doesn't say what they are, nor does he say where they and are. He doesn't provide the list. He and, doesn't provide and, the list, and, and which the, is the claim tragic. is like it's a dash. So they are claiming that Dr. Tyre did not provide list of differences. But actually this is a big lie. Dr. Tyre have provided list of the differences in every page of the manuscript in footnotes. And anyone can check them. These guys do not even know what they are talking about. However, these differences are no more than very simple, repetitive spelling differences. It's like someone who write the name Johnny with I instead of Y. But we can still read and pronounce it as Johnny. Furthermore, Dr. Tyre Altikulash who studied top copy manuscript say that this manuscript is 100% identical to Quran. He says, in other words, the copies of Quran being read today are identical to this Moose Half i.e. top copy manuscript which have been written around 13 centuries ago. And you can even check how identical the top copy manuscript is with the Quran by yourself. I will leave a link in description to download the published edition of top copy manuscript. This is the transliteration of the manuscript. And these are the variations given in red footnotes. Almost all of these variations in red footnotes are no more than different spelling methods. Other than that, the top copy manuscript is almost 100% identical with Quran. We also have the Husseini manuscript, which have been dated to late 7th century and early 8th century, an average of 70 years after the death of Prophet Muhammad, and it contains 99% of Quranic text. It is a complete manuscript of Quran as the top copy manuscript. And it is identical to Quran as well. Also there is the Sana manuscript attributed to Ali bin Abi Talab. Which have been dated to late 7th century and early 8th century. 
an average of 70 years after the death of Prophet Muhammad. And it contains 86% of Quranic text. There is also Quran of Uthman manuscript, which have been dated to late 7th century by the scholar Salahuddin al-Munajid. He says, and I suggest that it belongs to the late 1st century A.H. i.e. late 7th century and it is the oldest copy I have seen. And it contains 99% of Quranic text. And more interestingly is that at the end of this manuscript, it is written, Uthman bin Affan wrote it in the year 30 Hijri. This implies that it was either directly or indirectly copied from Uthmanic manuscript. To see more Quranic manuscripts, Islamic Awareness website have a list of early Quran manuscripts which is very helpful. In conclusion, Sana manuscript cannot be proven that it is the oldest Quran manuscript as Abdullah Samir said. We have many other manuscripts which have high probability to be older than Sana manuscript. The notion that Sana manuscript is the oldest was because not so much Quran manuscripts have been carbon dated yet. But now, since many Quran manuscripts have been carbon dated, this claim of Sana manuscript being oldest can be easily refuted. And we have loads of very early Quran manuscripts from the 7th century which are very close to the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad. And they are huge in amount. Christians keep bragging that they have the most well-attested book from antiquity. They keep bragging that they have more than 5000 Greek manuscripts. However, 94% of these Greek manuscripts are from the 9th century and later. And they are so different from each other. The problem is not the number of manuscripts or the fact that we have more than for any other author of antiquity. The problem is the ages of these manuscripts. How many manuscripts of the New Testament do we have from the first Christian century? None. From the decades after the books were written, how many do we have? The years afterwards, the decade, none. Zero. How many do we have from the early second century? Say, manuscripts that clearly date up to around the year 150. We have one scrap. This is it. This may look big because it's a big screen. This is the actual size. It's the size of a credit card. It's written on both front and back. It's from John chapter 18. It has several verses on it. You can see this little scrap has parts of seven lines on it. It's a very important manuscript because it's the earliest one we have. It's the early second century. And it is the only manuscript we have from the early second century. That's it. How many complete manuscripts do we have from the second and third centuries? We're not just talking about decades now after these things were originally written and copied and mistakes made and mistakes replicated and then more mistakes made and more replicated. We're not talking about years or decades. We're talking about centuries. How many complete manuscripts do we have from the second and third centuries? None. Zero. Well, if we have 5,500 manuscripts, where are they from? When are they from? Well. 94% of our surviving manuscripts come from the 9th century and later. 94% come from the 9th century, which is great if you want to know what the Bible looked like when Christians were reading it in the year 890. But if you want to know how they were reading it in the year 70, you've got a problem because you don't have manuscripts from that period. If you wanted to make a stack of the Bibles that are available to scholars today in manuscript form, the stack would go up to the ceiling. If you want to make a stack of the manuscripts that were made within, say, 60 or 80 years of the production of these books, you wouldn't be able to see the stack if we put it on the stage. Because there's hardly anything. If you don't trust me for saying that Quranic manuscripts are identical to Quran, then you can check how identical they are to Quran by yourself. A German institute is doing a project called Corpus Corinicum, which aims for studying all Quran manuscripts and carbon dating them. They have the contents of almost all of early Quran manuscripts.
You can check and verify everything by yourself. Firstly, open the website's link in description. Then change the language to English. Go to Manuscripts. Then this page will show you list of manuscripts according to their location. For example, if you want to see list of manuscripts in Paris, click choose a manuscript from here. Then you can view the folios of the manuscript from here. And you can check the transliteration of the manuscript from here and compare it with Quran in case if you find it hard to read the manuscript. Also in this page, you can literally find every single Quranic verse in the early manuscripts. If for example, I want to check verse 2367 of the Quran to see how many early manuscripts have this verse. Firstly, get the chapter 23 from here. Then get the verse number from here. Now click this tab to see how many early manuscripts have verse 2367 which I want. And you will find so many early Quran manuscripts which have verse 2367. It is not just two or three manuscripts. It's many manuscripts. And you will find almost all these manuscripts are identical with each other. And these manuscripts are very early. And close to the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad. And probably some of them are even from his lifetime. They are not 200 or 300 years later like Bible manuscripts. If Christians want to check Matthew 14.3, for example, in early manuscripts, they will find nothing. Because early New Testament manuscripts don't even exist. Most of the earliest New Testament manuscripts are very small fragments. Christians don't have this option of checking multitude of early manuscripts as we Muslims do. These are the earliest New Testament manuscripts. And these are the earliest Quran manuscripts. As we can see, that New Testament manuscripts are nothing compared to that of Quran. Now let's see how my brother Abu Musa used the site of Corpus Corinicum to refute a Christian who claimed that there is manuscript variant. So you ask a question concerning uh, verse 158 of uh, chapter 3. So I'm going to demonstrate to you it's totally identical and it's same. But uh, my friend you're talking about something that you have no knowledge about. Okay, you just, you know, baffling nonsense. So this is this is the phrase, right? This is the phrase. Wala in muttum aw qutiltum la ilallahi tuhsharun. Okay? This is the verse. So do you know my friend? But this located the verse is located here, over here. As you can see. As you can see with the microscope. Wala in. As you can see, wa la ya nun. Wala in. Wala in muttum. As you can see, mim ta mim. Aw, alif, waw, qaf, ta, la, ta, mim. Qutiltum. As you can see clearly, okay? This is the exact same thing, exactly same and identical to the Quran we read today. Okay? So, wa, wa, alif, waw, qaf, ta, lam, ta, mim. Qutiltum. Then the next word comes. La ilallah Lam Alif that, that you can see small Hamza Lam Hamza La ilallah As you can see Same thing Same as what, what we read today Same exactly And it's identical to the Quran we read today Okay 
same no differences now let's check one of the sana manuscript verses which abdullah samir showed in his video in the standard text of the quran today in surah 2 verse 196 there's a word uh, ru'usakum which is basically your heads do not shave your heads until the offering reaches its destination when you look at the the sana manuscript you see that the word ru'usakum is missing it's not there even though it doesn't change the meaning that much but There's one word that has gone. So the Arabic word your heads in Quran 2 196 is absent from Sana manuscript. However, this is clearly a scribal error because in Islam there are many types of shaving and as i proved earlier that the scribe of sana manuscript used to make mistakes due to his bad memory now let's see that the arabic word your heads is mentioned in all other manuscripts top copy manuscript codex wettstein grow a koran codex Arab 337 Arab 339 Arab 345 So the word your heads in Arabic is absent from Sana manuscript but is present in all the other manuscripts If Christians tried to apply this method by comparing the Bible manuscripts they will horribly fail because not even two Bible manuscripts are identical unlike Quran manuscripts conclusion the primary source for Quran transmission is the oral recitations which were transmitted from well known Quran reciters not any of the currently existing manuscripts This means that even if we have 1 million Quran manuscripts and all of them are so different from Quran it means nothing to us Muslims because we don't even depend on these manuscripts written by unknown scribes as being source for Quran transmission unlike Christians who consider manuscripts written by unknown scribes as source for Bible transmission so criticizing manuscripts will work with Christianity and other religions not Islam The Sana manuscript should not be considered as a reliable source to criticize Quran with because the scribe of Sana manuscript himself admitted that he made mistakes as i showed earlier so it was not a perfect copy or older version of Quran as Abdullah Samir falsely claimed the Sana manuscript is not the oldest one as Abdullah Samir claimed in the beginning of his video It was believed for a while that it is the oldest manuscript because not so much Quran manuscripts have been subjected to carbon dating before 2012. But recently many other Quran manuscripts have been subjected to carbon dating and they have high probability to be older than Sana manuscript or from same period. Almost all the Quran manuscripts are identical word for word with each other. We can say with confidence that at least 97% of Quran manuscripts are identical. Unlike the Bible which does not even have two identical manuscripts. The condition of Quran manuscripts is 1 million times better than that of Bible and any other book in history. No other book in history have huge amount of manuscripts close to the original source as the Quran have. For example, compare the condition of earliest Quran manuscripts with earliest Bible manuscripts. These earliest Quran manuscripts are so early, their size is big and they are huge in amount. While these earliest Bible manuscripts are late, their size is small and they are very few in amount. We have the best oral tradition and the best manuscript tradition. No other book in history have huge amount of manuscripts close to the original source as the Quran have. All other books have manuscripts written hundreds and thousands of years after the original source. And this includes the Bible as well. 
so why abdullah samir wants us to ignore all the orally transmitted recitations of quran which were transmitted by multitude of well known reciters and want us to believe that only one manuscript which was written by a known person is right why abdullah samir wants us to believe that all these quran manuscripts which are identical to quran to be wrong and only the lower text of sana manuscript is the right one why abdullah samir wants us to believe that lower text of sana manuscript was a perfect copy of quran while the scribe of sana manuscripts lower text himself admitted that he made mistakes abdullah samir your personal opinion does not matter what matters are the facts and evidences at the end learning all of this made me feel sad i felt sad that i was lied to that the quran that i was given which i thought was the exact word of god from the angel to muhammad and was given to me turns out it's not even that it's not even what muhammad came up with but something else do we know for sure that the quran of today is the same one that muhammad came with no we don't I wonder how the amazing scholar Abdullah Samir is reaching conclusions which no other scholar in history have reached. We can say with confidence that we don't know what the original Bible was like. The problem is we don't have the originals of the New Testament. What we have are thousands of copies of the New Testament that were made in most cases centuries later. We don't have the originals. We have copies made centuries later. These copies that were made centuries later contain numerous mistakes, thousands of mistakes, tens of thousands of mistakes, hundreds of thousands of mistakes. But to say with confidence that the Quran of today is not the same as the one revealed to Prophet Muhammad will only make you look foolish and ridiculous. But of course, only the ignorance who follow the crowd will clap for you. I think there's more to this story and that academic research on Islam needs to be popularized. That is ironic. We literally have tons of scholars as early as the 7th century who deeply studied Islam academically. They studied every single verse, hadith, narrators of hadith, transmission of Quran, transmission of hadith, biography of the prophet, biography of his companions and much much more Islamic studies. and we have tons of early books which studied every single issue related to islam so we are not waiting for a joker in the 21st century like abdullah samir to tell us that islam should be academically studied so what were all these scholars doing for more than 1000 years according to abdullah samir there are even loads of non muslim and non biased scholars who studied islam in details On the other hand the bible was hidden from public for 1000 years Islam is the only religion which gives certainty I wonder how followers of other religions like Christians and Hindus are even convinced by their religions Islam is the only fully preserved religion with verifiable sources which provides perfect accuracy On the other hand all other religions depend on baseless sources written by unknown authors Quran is the only fully memorized book by millions of people no water can wash away Quran as Allah said and that is not the case with any other book on earth If all the bibles if all the talmuds if all the hindu scriptures all the buddhist scriptures if all those books were thrown in the ocean if all those people of those religions agreed throw them all in the ocean and then we muslims we threw all the qurans in the ocean also the quran is the only one that in a matter of a day or two would be brought right back because it has been memorized from cover to cover At the end I request my Muslim brothers and sisters to share this video everywhere on social media on Facebook Twitter YouTube and so on
Help this video go viral and get thousands of views so that the channel grows faster, insha Allah.